Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today we'll be looking at the liver. We'll be looking at the liver. So this organ or gland that I'm holding now is the liver. So this is the liver. And the liver is defined as an accessory digestive gland that is situated in the right hypochondriac region of the abdomen or the right upper quadrant of the abdomen and you can see how the liver is you can look at the situation of the liver this is how the liver is situated in the right hypochondriac region of the abdomen and this part of the liver extends into the epigastric region while the whole of this part is situated in the right hypochondriac region so in the female the liver weighs around 1300 gram or 1.3 kg while in the male the liver weighs 1600 gram or 1.6 kg so that is it and the liver is reddish brown in color or it is darkish red in color whichever one and also the liver is a wedged shaped organ so it has a wedge shape so you can see the wedged shape of the liver so we'll be looking at the functions of the liver the first function of the liver is that the liver help in the emulsification of fats so it break fats into clusters so that is the first thing the liver does then the second function of the liver is that it helps in the storage of glycogen also lipid and the rest of them then the liver also help in the toxification or uh, removal of harmful substances like alcohol drugs toxins and the rest of them then the liver also plays a role in the production of bile it helps in producing bile when the bile is produced in the liver it is transferred to the uh, gallbladder where they are temporarily stored and from the gallbladder it moves to the small intestine the duodenum of the small intestine where it takes its function there so these are the functions of the liver then we'll be looking at the surfaces and border of the liver the liver have an inferior border here so you can see the inferior border here is the most prominent or the obvious border there are other borders in the liver but they are blunt so the inferior border as you can see is sharp so this is the inferior border of the liver then having seen the border let's look at the surfaces or the surface of the liver this is the anterior surface of the liver this surface is the surface that is related to the anterior abdominal wall then this is the superior surface of the liver this surface is related to the diaphragm so this is the superior surface of the liver then this is the right surface of the liver this is the right surface of the liver this surface is related to the rib bone laterally then if you turn to the posterior here is the posterior surface of the liver while here is the inferior surface of the liver here is the posterior surface while here is the inferior surface of the liver so i repeat the surfaces this is the anterior surface of the liver this is the right surface of the liver this is the superior surface of the liver this is the posterior surface of the liver why here is the inferior surface of the liver so having seen the surfaces let's look at the lobes of the liver now first of all there is this ligament here this ligament here is known as the falciform ligament and this falciform ligament divides the liver into 
two main lobes the right lobe and the left lobe so the falciform ligaments here divide the liver into the right lobe and the left lobe and as you can see the right lobe is bigger than the left lobe then we have other lobe posteriorly we have this lobe here which is known as the caudate lobe of the liver and inferiorly we have this lobe here which is known as the quadrate lobe of the liver so these four lobes are the four lobes of the liver the right lobe the left lobe the caudate lobe superiorly and the, the quadrate lobe inferiorly so i've shown us the falciform ligament and the falciform ligament continues inferiorly as the ligamentum teres this is the ligamentum teres or the round ligament of the liver so this is the ligamentum teres and superiorly the first form ligaments continue as the coronary ligament superiorly it continues as the coronary ligament superiorly then this ligament here is known as the left triangular ligament of the liver so this is known as the left triangular ligament of the liver towards the left lobe then towards the right lobe you can see this coronary ligament here then you can also see the right triangular ligament although it is cut out or you can see the right triangular ligament extending from the coronary ligament so these are the ligaments in the in the liver then if you turn to the posterior surface posterior inferior surface posterior and inferior surface of the liver i've showed us the audit lobe of the liver and i've also showed us the quadrate lobe of the liver then there is this passage here between the left lobe and the caudate lobe this passage here is known as the fissure for ligamentum venosum this is known as the fissure for ligamentum venosum it is from this fissure that the lesser omentum begins and there is a ligament that lies in this fissure known as the ligamentum venosum this is it the ligamentum venosum then the fissure for ligamentum venosum continues inferiorly you can see it continues inferiorly as the fissure for ligamentum teres i showed us the ligamentum teres or the round ligament of the liver then having seen that the caudate lobe of the liver gave an extension you can see this extension towards the right lobe this extension is known as the caudate process so this is it this is known as the caudate process so this is the porta hepatis this area of the liver is known as the porta hepatis it is in this area that the hepatic artery the porta vein and also the cystic duct enters the liver but we are coming back to it then beside the caudate lobe towards the uh, right lobe of the liver you see this big or large vessel here this is known as the inferior vena cava and this inferior vena cava lie in a groove known as the groove for inferior vena cava this is the groove for inferior vena cava and this is the inferior vena cava this inferior vena cava here opens superiorly so you can see the opening of the inferior vena cava and also the portal vein open into the inferior vena cava within the liver then there is an area in the liver 
towards the right lobe. You notice the difference between this area and this area. This triangular area is known as the bare area of the liver. As you can see, it lacks peritoneum, visceral peritoneum. So you can see that this, all this area of the liver contains visceral peritoneum. But this area of the liver, which is known as the bare area of the liver, has no peritoneum. It has no visceral peritoneum. And that's why it is called the, the bare area of the liver. And this bare area of the liver is bounded superiorly by the superior margin of the coronary ligament, inferiorly by the inferior margin of the coronary ligament, and the base is formed by the inferior vena cava and the groove for inferior vena cava. And also the upper here. The upper here is formed by the right triangular ligament. So the right triangular ligament forms the upper of this. So as you can see, this is the right triangular ligament here, forming the upper of this bare area. So having said that, if you come over to this portal, you see this vein here. This vein here is known as the portal vein. Portal vein is formed by the combination of the superior mesenteric vein and also the splenic vein. And you know as they form, they enter the river. So this is the portal vein and also the hepatic artery. This is the hepatic artery. The hepatic artery forms about 20% of the blood supply to the river. Why the portal vein? forms about 80% of the blood supply to the liver. So, as you can see now in this portal, it contains the portal vein, it contains the hepatic artery, and as a matter of fact, the hepatic artery divides into two inside the liver, the right hepatic artery and the left one, which supply the two different lobes of the liver. And each of these hepatic arteries further divides into segmental arteries. And the uh, segmental artery further divides into interlobular arteries that supplies the liver. So you can see that the portal contains the portal vein, the hepatic artery, and also the common bile duct. So this is the area that allows these structures to enter or leave the liver. Then this is the fossa for gallbladder. This is the fossa for gallbladder. And you can see the gallbladder lying in this fossa. So this is the gallbladder lying in the fossa of the gallbladder. Then coming to the gallbladder, this part is known as the fundus of the gallbladder. This uh, protruded part is known as the fundus of the gallbladder. This is the body of the gallbladder. This is the neck of the gallbladder. Then having seen the neck of the gallbladder, this is the cystic duct. This is the cystic duct. And the cystic duct and also the hepatic duct. The hepatic duct is the duct coming from the liver, from inside. And this is the, the cystic duct. The two of them join together to form the bile duct. So you can see the cystic duct and the hepatic duct from inside joining together here to form the common bile duct. So this is the common bile duct. Then having seen that, let's go over to the relations of the liver. As you can see, this inferior surface of the liver, eh, you can as well say, call it the visceral surface because it is the surface that lie or is related to the visceral organs so this area now this is the right lobe posteriorly this area is related to the right kidney so this area is related to the right kidney then Inferiorly, this area is related to the right colic flesia of the colon. 
So this area is related to the right conic flexure of the colon. And that is where the hepatic flexure picks its name because it is related to this part of the liver. Then this part here now that I'm touching is related to the second part of the duodenum. So this is related to the second part of the duodenum. So we've been able to see the fissures in the liver. So let me do a recap of what I've said so far. This is the anterior surface of the liver. This is the superior surface of the liver. This is the posterior surface of the liver. This is the inferior surface of the liver. And here is the right surface of the liver. And I also told us that this ligament, falciform ligament, divides the liver into the right lobe and the left lobe. Then we also have two more lobes posteriorly. We have the caudate lobe, which lies superiorly, and we have the quadrate lobe, which lies inferiorly. Then I told us that this is the portal. This is the fissure for ligamentum venosum, and it continues inferiorly as the fissure for ligamentum teres. This is the ligamentum teres, or the round ligament of the liver. This is the coronary ligament. Then I also showed us the bare area of the liver, which is devoid of visceral peritoneum. Then, this is the inferior vena cava, lying in the groove for the inferior vena cava. This is the common bile duct, the hepatic artery, and the portal vein. Why this is the gallbladder. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I will encourage us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, learn with you some great, like this video, share this video to your friends, and comment on this video. Thank you very much.